We're saving them, and you know it. Directed and co-written by Joshua John Miller, who you may know as a character actor with a bit of a horror pedigree. He was in the vampire movie Near Dark. He is the man behind The Exorcism, which stars Russell Crowe, David Hyde Pierce and Sam Worthington, to name but a few. Now, this is actually a one-two punch for Russell Crowe, as he obviously did The Pope's Exorcist quite recently, although interestingly... This movie was actually filmed before The Pope's Exorcist. It just hasn't been released until now. It's actually made in 2019. So The Exorcism, this is somewhat of a meta um, kind of possession movie, if you like. And it's kind of a little bit of a movie about the kind of apparent cursed films that, you know, we, we hear so much about these days. So uh, Russell Crowe plays a kind of a washed up actor called Tony. Now, he has been at the bottom of a bottle for many years. He's, his wife has died. He has an estranged relationship with his daughter. And when he was young, he used to be a, a kind of a devout Catholic. But he was um, abused by the, uh, the Catholic Church, you might say. And he gets the chance to play a priest in a horror movie about an exorcism. Now we see at the beginning of the movie that this, the actual set of this film may well have issues as there seems to be a strange death on sets that leads ultimately for the vacancy for Russell Crowe's uh, actor. And he gets the part of this uh, priest in this uh, particular um, um, exorcist style horror movie. But whilst he is playing this, this role, he is racked by guilt about his the relationship with his daughter um, feelings of animosity, you might say, to the church about his kind of situation when he was younger. And this ultimately invites the demon in to possess him. And as the film goes on, he slowly gets possessed. And a lot of people put it down to the method acting or he's on substance abuse. And it's not until the end that a few people realise there may well actually be some serious demon action going on. What will happen? You will have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss what I think works in this movie. Possession, exorcism, demon films, they're often criticised for being quite samey and not having a lot of originality and more or less kind of taking that same uh, storyline and just retelling it. And although I do think there are elements that this movie still has with that, I would say the meta element here of a you know, an actor playing a priest in an exorcism movie who actually becomes uh, possessed does give it some um, originality to a certain degree. And the kind of the, the little bit of commentary on, you know, the aforementioned cursed films, uh, the kind of the tropes that are, we see in possession movies are kind of somewhat kind of explored here. Uh, a little nod to obviously famous possession movies, clearly obviously the exorcist and things makes it for a little bit of a peek behind the curtain, so to speak, of the, the Hollywood machine that, you know, that churns out all of these kind of uh, possession style movies. So I, it does have that a little bit of a, its own identity to a certain degree. And what is interesting, having, you know, the Pope's Exorcist, the other kind of uh, possession movie, uh, come out here, you know, quite recently, this one... The Exorcism is really Russell Crowe getting possessed, while the other film was the, uh, was Russell Crowe fighting the demon, so to speak. So, you know, he's kind of on the two, uh, the flip side of the coin, so to speak, with this one. So, again, it, it does make it have a little bit of its own flavour. The other thing I would say maybe sets this movie apart is it, the, the possession is quite slow and builds. And had you not known this was a horror film, and you had just seen Russell Crowe acting weird, you probably would put it down to, you know, him drinking or substance abuse or some type of mental break, because it actually starts off relatively subtle and his behavior just seems somewhat kind of uncouth, rowdy, um, and you would completely understand why people would just think he's a drunk or something like that. Um, 
Now, we as the audience know that this is a horror film, so we are expecting this kind of, you know, progression to keep going and it obviously be somewhat overt, you know, obviously as the film goes on. But like I said, I think that gives it, it gives it a more of a dramatic feel. Certainly the, th the first two acts of this film, we, we get only a, a minor amounts of actual kind of horror on screen, so to speak. It is really the slow progression of the Tony character played by Russell Crowe ultimately getting possessed, people kind of putting it down to various different kind of um, sources. And then the, we have this kind of priest who is the kind of the consultant on the set. And he's maybe the first one who starts to think maybe something is kind of not quite right here and his, his daughter maybe, you know. So people are slowly kind of catching on that there's something is happening. Um, so that's, that's the kind of you know, fairly kind of an interesting idea here. Like I say, this slower burn, this kind of more of a, um, a dramatic take on, on, on the kind of the horror. It's certainly not as overt and in your face as the Pope's Exorcist, it's much more of a, 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 a you know, a slow burn, dramatic, talky film than that one. Um, and then we get to the third act, which is kind of really where it goes a little bit more overt in regards to the horror, but never as much as, for example, the Pope's Exorcist. So yeah, it's, it's a slower burn film, so bear that in mind. I think the performances are fairly good. Russell Crowe, I don't think he's such a fun character as he did in The Pope's Exorcist, where he was playing a quite a flamboyant priest. Here he's very much a kind of down on his luck, depressed kind of character. But I don't think he does necessarily a bad performance. I mean, it's, it is Russell Crowe at the end of the day, and you do feel, you know, it's a bit like Nick Cage. He still kind of gives uh, the performance. But maybe it's not as memorable as, as some, but certainly not a, uh, necessarily a bad performance. And there are a couple of kind of creepy moments in the movie. So what doesn't work in this film? Okay, so I think maybe the amount of, air quotes, horror on screen is going to be less than people are expecting. The first two thirds of this movie, as I say, very subtle. And if you didn't know it was a horror film, you may even put it down as just a kind of guy losing his kind of cool and stuff. Very kind of little actual horror. And then we get to the third act, which is where things get a little bit more um, intense. And I have to be honest with you, I think it was a little silly. And certainly things didn't really make sense to me. The first two acts, quite sober, you know, dramatic, slow burn. The third act, silly things, people just seem to be walking around on a closed set without, in, with, with impunity. Um, no one's questioning, no security is there, things like this. Um, the, the actions will happen without spoiling anything. You would have thought there would have been some um, consequences, but we never really kind of see anything. Things just happen, people disappear and kind of reappear in other places. And the actual conclusion doesn't really make sense to me in a biblical sense. Now, I'm, I'm an atheist. But I'm led to believe certain things must be in place for certain things to happen. It's all I'm saying. So, you know, it's it's a little bit of a, of a mixed bag in regards to tone. Certainly the first two acts, very sober. Third act, a little silly. There are also some, some sort of subplots here that I thought were unnecessary. We have a, a romance with um, Russell Crowe's on-screen daughter that really goes nowhere and really just takes up screen time for no reason. It doesn't have any impact on the story as a whole. Uh, Sam Worthing's character is kind of like throwaway, to be honest with you. And I actually think this movie could have benefited from being a little bit more behind, the, a little bit more meta, more behind the curtain, because I think that was its kind of unique selling point in a way. And I think, although the movie does have elements of that, it doesn't go far enough with it, and it doesn't really kind of carve out a unique horror film. And it, it still ends up having some similarities between horror films that you have seen before. You know, it's a well-made horror film, but when we get the kind of the more overt possession stuff, it's, you know, it's kind of, again, it kind of just goes to that sort of uh, things you've kind of seen before, although maybe a little bit more silly is all I would say, with kind of a conclusion to me that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So overall, I think this is a an interesting attempt to make having a little bit of a different spin on the on the horror 
possession movie kind of style of films. I don't think it's entirely successful. I do think the Pope's Exorcist is much more of a superior film, and I'm not even saying that one is, you know, bells and whistles necessarily, but at least that had a little bit more of its own identity in a certain aspects, certainly within the character that Crow is playing. Um, this one, I think, is a little kind of a fizzle rather than a bang. So it's a five out of 10 for me. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.